You may have read the popular New York Magazine article, or perhaps you're watching the latest Netflix show, Inventing Anna. Anna Delvey, or Sorokin, has taken the world by storm, and perhaps she'll continue with an upcoming book deal and rumored HBO docuseries. But in this episode, I want to hear from you. Is Anna the anti-hero of her own story, or is she really the villain? From what I've seen, there are arguments on both sides. She managed to outsmart the banks, but also managed to cheat a lot of her friends. So let's dive into who Anna Delvey is, where she came from, and why she's pretending to be someone that she's not, and how she feels about getting caught. Then we can decide whether we think she's the villain or the hero in this story. First, let's dive into the story. Who is Anna Delvey? Now, Anna Delvey is really Anna Sorokin. She was born in Russia and later made her way to Germany as a teen, then built a personality around being a wealthy German heiress named Anna Delvey, who was set to inherit, I think, $60 million. Between 2013 and 2017, she worked her way into New York social circles, living a lavish lifestyle. In 2017, she was arrested after defrauding banks, hotels, and acquaintances in the U.S. for a total of $275,000. In May of 2019, she was sentenced to between 4 and 12 years in prison for grand larceny. But on February 11th of 2021, just after serving two years, Sorokin was then released from prison on parole. When her father, Vadem Sorokin, was asked about her, quote, she has a selfish personality. We can't do anything about it. We raised her well, end quote. He mentioned that he and her mom had lent her money and they never received any of it back. And he knew nothing of her life in the U.S., elaborating that he knows nothing nor cares to know anything about her life at this point. And I don't know. It comes from nature, he said. Naturally, she is guilty to a certain extent. On March 25th of 2021, ICE detained Anna for overstaying her visa and she has been detained ever since. Her current trial to be deported back to Germany is set for October of 2022. Psychologist and best-selling author of The Confidence Game, Maria Konnikova, identifies in her research three traits common to con artists. Psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism. Since we don't use all of those terms every day, let's define them really quickly. So, psychopathy is a lack of empathy poor behavior controls, and often results in criminal behavior. Narcissism we've talked about a lot before, and I'll link the videos that I've done in the description, but narcissists have an overly inflated view of self. They can be addicted and driven by a need for attention and can use others to get these needs met, whether that's for attention, money, or power, or whatever. Machiavellianism describes people who are incredibly skilled at manipulation. They're able to tell people what they want to hear and convince them to go along with their plans, all the while making that person feel like it was their own idea, like they came up with it to begin with. Now, these three traits together are known in psychology circles as the dark triangle. So let's take a look at some of the behaviors of Anna Sorokin to see how they might or might not fit into this. Psychopathy is the first one, and obviously watching someone on TV and reading interviews doesn't really give us the ability to diagnose, but I will say that Anna Sorokin's lack of empathy for her victims is a startling indicator that she might have some of the tendencies that would lead themselves to this type of diagnosis. Most notably is her complete lack of remorse. Do you feel bad about some of the people that got burnt along the way? Can you name me the names of the people? and I'll tell you if I feel bad about them. You've been described as a con woman, a very good con artist. I don't see myself as such. You don't think you've conned anybody? No. You led them to believe that you had a trust fund with millions of dollars in it and it would be accessed when you turned 26. How did I lead them to believe? <laughs> how do I lead someone to believe how much money I have? Next, let's talk about narcissism. It's not just the lack of remorse that's startling. It's interesting to note the way Anna simply doesn't even think she did anything wrong. It's one thing to not regret your misdeeds. It's another to believe you didn't commit any misdeeds. And that seems to be linked in part to the entitled sense that Anna has. Or maybe she has some delusions about her situation, which obviously, you know, would push us towards another type of diagnosis, like schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. The story was true. It was not hard. Like, I did have this project and I did have this vision and it probably 
would have worked out if I did have the money, so... But you didn't have the money. That's why the project was no good. If I would have gotten the money from the bank. The whole Anna Delvey Foundation, your whole business, was just this house of cards. It wasn't real, Anna. So many businesses are just a house of cards. You just don't know about it. Although many interviews about Anna seem to imply that she had a strange, abrupt personality and wasn't necessarily a warm or winning person, she seems to have had an incredible knack for getting people on board with her ideas by appealing to the currency that mattered most to them. Not even flattery, but fun social dynamics. One of her victims, Rachel LaRoche Williams, says she, quote, challenged my sense of propriety and encouraged me to care less about what people thought, to cut loose and to have some fun. She said, Anna crossed my path when I felt isolated and I was happy to have a new friendship. The timing worked in her favor. It's like she could tell when someone needed a friend or was having a hard time and would prey upon that vulnerability. Do you see this whole thing as a victimless crime? I don't see this case as a crime at all. How about that? How can you not see it as a crime? Many people don't see Anna this way. There's an entirely other angle. Many people see her as the modern female version of Robin Hood, and they admire her for what she's done. One of those reasons is the victims. It's hard for us to have sympathy for Anna's victims. Big banks, they feel like organizations, not people with feelings. When they're the ones that are being, you know, conned, it can kind of feel like a victimless crime. And her other victims, it's hard for some people to sympathize with New York socialites. The people she conned have a life that many might envy. There can be a feeling that they got what they deserved. I've heard a lot of people saying that online. And many might feel that even Williams, who we quoted earlier, was happy to take advantage of Anna before adva Anna took advantage of her. So it was okay one way, but not the other. Also, Anna exploited things that we might feel are problematic to begin with. You know, Williams had said that she trusted Anna in part because of her social media following. And I don't know about you, but when I hear that, it can feel like what's broken here isn't Anna, but maybe our influence culture, and it's so willing to trust people who have enough followers on social media. And even though we know it can be just one perspective, we can still get caught up in that. And this story can feel a little bit like the emperor's new clothes, like everyone was willing to go along with Anna because a friend of a friend, you know, said she was cool. And it feels like the system itself is what's problematic. And the part of us that's so desperate to be cool, you know, we can make ourselves vulnerable to situations and people like Anna, we can get conned. Williams is quoted as saying that Anna took on traditionally male-dominated power structures when it came to financial scamming. And people are interested in that. The story is timely because people are so interested in social media now and its positive and negative impacts on society and the way in which it encourages people to want to build themselves as an internet celebrity. And there's also the fact that many people find her fascinating. Just kind of want to see what she'll do next. I personally find this incredibly interesting because we all know she's dangerous in many ways. I don't think anybody would disagree with that, right? Yet we can't stop watching, reading, wanting to know more about her. And you all know how much I love crime shows like Law & Order SVU, Criminal Minds, Midsummer Murders, you name it. And the reason that we are often so interested, like I am, in shows like that and in people like Anna is because we are wired to seek out threats so that we can learn more about them figure out what they are, come up, come up with plans to avoid these things and protect ourselves. So of course we wanna know more about Anna Delvey or Sorokin and what she might be doing. We do this to keep us safe and to help us feel better and more in control. Not to mention that we can also enjoy drama that doesn't involve us because we can get that risky feeling that maybe adrenaline dump without any of the threat or consequences. I mean, I get it. I like that stuff too. So which is it? Is Anna someone we can admire? or someone we abhor. Psychologists say she took advantage of relational bonds and used them against people. But don't many of us do that for different motivations? Or is Anna a hero, revealing to us the brokenness in our need to believe in social media? Or are those of us who admire her just more victims of her con? Now, obviously, I don't know Anna personally, and I've never met her, and I'm limited by what I can watch and read, which we all know never gives us the whole story. But based on what I do know, I personally don't think Anna did anything good. Just because banks aren't people doesn't mean that people weren't affected by her harmful deeds. And thinking of her as Robin Hood 
doesn't really fit for me because she didn't really give money to people who needed it. She spent it on lavish goods and used it as a way of manipulating others. Sure, she shed light on some issues that we as a society do need to acknowledge and work to rectify, but it doesn't really excuse the behavior. So in my opinion, stealing from anyone is wrong. I'll tell you if I feel bad about them. You've been described as a con woman, a very good con artist. I don't see myself as such. You don't think you've conned anybody? No. Manipulating others is abusive behavior, and I just can't support someone who does things like that, especially when there's no remorse. And not to mention the fact that her parents like cut her off and don't want to know anything about it and what she's doing, what she's up to. That also really struck me. But those are just my thoughts. I would love to hear yours. Do you think she's the villain or the hero? Or is it not that easy to decide? Let me know what you think in those comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.